Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here in this room and out there in cyberspace, wherever you're witnessing this service today. You are welcome. Pray with me now in this sacred moment of Teze, as together we encircle the sacred space and our planet with light, life, love, and joy, holding the vision of wisdom, wholeness, and radiant health as we remember our fellow brothers and sisters living through the devastating fires in Hawaii. Knowing God is showing up for them as the efforts of many generous volunteers, services, and available resources meeting their needs. We give thanks. Together, we pray deepening our connection within and with each other to the one peaceful presence, power, substance, intelligence, and process ever present and everywhere behind all life which I call God. I know we are created in this image and likeness as individualized expressions of this one, divinely inspired and purposefully made and worthy of all goodness. Let's breathe that in. Feel the light, <clears throat> love, and life that we are deepening our connection to the one within us and all around us. Together we rest our minds, hearts, and emotions, leaning into the ever-present divine presence, remembering who and whose we are, opening to God's abundance and being showered with the grace of peace, love, joy, mercy, compassion, and, oh yes, wisdom. From this place of stillness, we are open to and inspired by Reverend Diana's message about claiming our spiritual authority to write our stories with integrity and in unity. I know each one of us hears, receives, and accepts the right and perfect inspiration needed to live our life more abundantly with confidence, thriving right where we are planted, enabling us to be a blessing to ourselves and to others we encounter. I give thanks and gratitude for this beautiful day, for the life-nourishing words we are about to receive, to each and every one of you and for all the good that is here now and continues to unfold in our human experiences with each other moment by moment <coughs> we are blessed I call it done and so it is Amen Thank you Chris for that beautiful opening of sacred space Good morning. Good morning. So good to have you all here this morning. My name is Reverend Diana Johnson. I'm the pastor spiritual director of Mystic Heart Spiritual Center. We are an interfaith, an independent interfaith community, and we teach universal principles and practical spirituality. So I welcome you home to our community if you should choose it for yourself. And even more so, I welcome you home to your own mystic heart because this is where the guidance and wisdom really lies within you. So we begin our journey of Teze this morning, our meditative gathering, by joining our voices together.
creation star to guide you to heaven's door to guide you to heaven's door to guide you Surrendering in love. What a beautiful phrase to lead us into our breathing together. We take a moment to breathe together as one living organism. Breathing in the peace that dwells in this space. And allowing that peace to find a home in your heart, in your soul. And as you exhale, sending that peace back out into the room, into the world. And to honor the connection with our global family. We envision a web of consciousness that surrounds and infuses the planet. Each of us a radiant light, shining within the web, reflecting the pure radiance of our divine nature. Every human every other than human creature, every plant, a shining expression of the one light, the rocks and the minerals, water and wind, stars and planets. each one a perfect and intentional creation emanating from one source, from the one light. Experience that with the eye behind the eye. As we come together this morning, we set an intention to leave a positive imprint on human evolution. 
and on the world for all time. An imprint of love, of compassion, of kindness and caring, of peace. The flow of Teze this morning reminds us that inquiring minds want to know. It points us in the direction of consciously creating the stories of our lives. Once upon a time, in the very beginning of time as we know it, 13.7 billion years ago, all the energy and matter in the universe was condensed into a single point smaller than the head of a pin. Some kind of life impulse was present, must have been, because something cannot come from nothing. And that which is eternal in you your spirit was part of that impulse. In an instant, a great cosmic yes exploded into existence, into the cosmic firestorm that had been burning for a million years. From the amorphous cloud of hydrogen and helium that remained, this same life impulse gradually created a hundred billion galaxies. And then somehow, inside those primal stars, the heat got so intense that they exploded into supernovas, giving birth to all the higher elements like carbon and oxygen scattering them across the galaxy. These higher elements eventually became the building blocks of our home planet and eventually gave birth to what's been called the second Big Bang, the birth of the evolutionary process in which even more brilliant and nuanced and complex creativity took form as biological diversity through evolution. Some 50 million different unfoldings over billions of years. And then, your spirit still present. About 35,000 years ago, the third Big Bang, or the mind's Big Bang, the moment when one of these creatures, one of these species, became self-aware, began to reflect on its place in the cosmos, to make sense of life and death, to make sense of its own story. This is when artwork appeared on cave walls, ornate beads were created, people began placing flowers on the graves of the dead. In other words, human creativity was born. From this moment forward, evolution began to accelerate at a much more rapid rate. Culture was born. The evolutionary dynamics that had been unfolding through biological evolution suddenly began to express themselves through the evolution of culture. Humans moved from hunter-gatherer to agrarian societies, on into the industrial and information ages. Their organizing structure went from the family to the clan, to the tribe, to the city-state, to the nation-state, to where we are now, reaching toward a global village.
The evolution of technology grew from the simple hand axe to the plow, to the crane, to the space shuttle, to the internet. Through all of time, the spirit that you are has been present, eternal. Just feel your own creativity on this upward spiral from the cosmos to the biosphere to the human sphere, the sphere of culture and consciousness. And this movement that's been going on in which life emerged toward greater unity. What is happening here? How and why did cooperating groups of self replicating molecular processes come together to form the first cells? Groups of individual cells to form larger and more complex cells. Groups of complex cells come together to create the first multi-celled organisms. And then these groups of multi-celled organisms, like us, combine to form clans and tribes and societies. And how and why did societies continue to reach toward widening circles of cooperation, higher orders of unity, cooperation and complexity. And now so recently in cosmic time, something yet new again is emerging, something beyond simple self-reflective consciousness. Humans are not only able to ponder their story and create meaning, but are awakening to their own spiritual nature. You are beginning to recognize yourself as an agent of change, to participate in conscious evolution. What is it like to feel in the human heart this impulse to care for the greater good? What does it feel like in the human heart to be love in action? To feel an impulse toward creativity, toward freedom and justice for all beings? Feel yourself awakening to a deep sense of caring. Feel your desire to contribute to the elevation of the whole into something that's never been before. What does it feel like to be an individual human being awakening to who you really are? And what are you going to do with this life that you have in your hands? Now, as an individual expression of this divine life, dare to make conscious steps toward spiritual awakening and evolution. Allow the part of yourself that cares for the whole of life and for the future of our planet and species, allow that part to emerge. Call forth a new part of your being, a part that recognizes that what you do with this precious life really matters. A part that thrives on change and stepping into the unknown. A part that cares about the truth, that feels like truth needs to be spoken, even when it's uncomfortable. 
because it wants to be in integrity with reality. Call forth the part of you that wants to be an expression of the highest possibility in the world. Allow yourself to fully step into and identify with this part of the self as your deepest, truest self. See how this part of yourself is none other than the creative force of the cosmos, the divine impulse. This is who and whose you really are. Once upon a time, when we hear that phrase, we know what's coming. We know just where we are. We're at the beginning of a story. We don't know who we're about to meet or what's going to happen next. We just know that something is coming. And so we lean in toward the storyteller. Rabbi Yeshua of Galilee was a master storyteller. He used parables, symbols, metaphors, and similes to point beyond what can be conveyed in mere words. There is no language that can express spiritual truth. Words define or make finite. But the nature of the divine is boundless. We tend to think of once upon a time as being in the past, a long time ago, maybe even in a galaxy far, far away. If there are parts of this, oh, but for characters in the story, the plot is unfolding in the, in the present. They experience what happens in the here and the now. So every moment of every day is once upon a time. Claiming our spiritual authority means that we are the author of our own life story. If there are parts of the story we don't like, we are free to take the plot in a different direction. Or even to end volume one and begin writing the sequel. And our once upon a time, the opening of our story is now. I invite us to contemplate how we would like our life to unfold as we move forward in time. Do we want things to continue the way they have been? Or might we desire more joy, greater peace, deeper love, increased prosperity. As we share our three minutes of silent contemplation this morning, let us feel into the vision that we have for our life story. And then cast that feeling into the field of infinite possibility that is the spirit of creation. Right here and now is our own once upon a time.
as we bring our awareness back into our shared story unfolding in this time and this place we are grateful for the insights we have gained and for the spiritual authority we have been granted to continually create and recreate our life in ever more and more empowering ways. Thank you, God, for everyone and for everything. May, be, may we be vigilant so that we don't let our habitual thinking or negative talk write our story. And may our faith in our spiritual authority grow ever stronger as the divine creative principle receives our new story, embodies it, and is compelled to bring it into our experience. As Taze continues, we incorporate Reverend Diana's spiritual insights, wisdom, and inspiration into our writing as we each author our own life story, beginning today on page one. Once upon a time. Humans like to tell stories. And stories can be useful. There's nothing wrong with stories. It's how we communicate. We love mythic stories, metaphoric stories. We identify with the characters. And then there are the stories of our lives, where maybe my life was headed in a particular direction, and then it turned a corner, and then it went a radically different direction. These are stories about me. You have stories about you. We love the stories of saints and sages. And we love the stories of demons. Because we relate to them all. We recognize them in ourselves. Stories are teaching vehicles. And can be very useful. But once we get to the point of that which cannot be taught to what cannot be learned which is who you are then at least for an instant there has to be a discovery of what is closer than the story of you this is not to diminish the story it actually makes it a much better story when the stories come forth consciously from each of us. When the stories come from who and what you are being in the world. They are coming from something that cannot be told about you. Your life story is infused with truth. It becomes a living work of art shining its light on the world when it comes from who and what you are being in the world. We see this in the story of Jesus, in the story of the Buddha, in the stories of Chief Joseph, Harriet Tubman, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Teresa, and so many others. These life stories are infused with what cannot be told and with the qualities that are alive in you and in me right now. And so in this sacred moment, I am at peace. I feel and know the truth of who and whose I am. And I know the truth of these words for each one listening. 
each one a perfect and intentional expression of the one life, here on purpose, necessary to the unfolding of creation. The life of spirit would be incomplete without my existence, your existence, and participation. And my life would be incomplete without my recognition that I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Both pieces are necessary. Acknowledging the thread of evolution and my place in it, I step into a greater story. I allow my being to inform my doing. My thoughts, words, and actions move into the world from my deepest, most conscious place. Spirit infuses every moment with presence. Grace lifts and carries me through each and every day. The qualities of spirit shine through me and flow through my relationships, bringing a greater sense of connection than ever before. I'm so grateful for my growing awareness and for the spiritual community that supports my journey. Thank you, Spirit, for the abundance in every area of my life and for the peace that fills my days. My life is showered with blessings, and for this I give deep and profound thanks. I release this prayer fully aware of its power, knowing all that unfolds from this moment forward is my answer to prayer. I turn it over to the loving and lawful presence of the One, letting it be, and so it is. Amen. Good morning. Coming back into the awareness of our bodies, our senses, and the room, and looking around to see who's here celebrating with us this morning, welcoming those who are new. This has the potential of being at least part of your spiritual family, should you choose it for yourself. There are many others of us out there somewhere this morning. <laughs> but these are people who care about you and who will be there for you, if and when you need it. So as we close our Teze portion of our gathering this morning, we offer the opportunity for you to share of your financial good with our community so that we can continue to do our good work in the world. And if you're joining us online, you can go to mysticheart.org and you'll find a donate button and a mailing address, whichever you prefer. And so as we offer this bit of time for, um, for your giving, we are so grateful. And we play for you a song by a gentleman named Danny Barca, who lives in the Mendocino area. And this song is called Long Before. So listen to the lyrics. You'll find it interesting. Long before Muhammad, long before Lao Tzu. Long before Moses, Confucius too. Long before the Vedas, long before Zen. Long before the dervishes started to spin. Long before pharaohs, long before kings, long before Icarus donned his wings. Long before heaven, long before hell, long before the walls of Jericho fell. Someone stood in front of a cave, said there's something going on I can't see. Won't somebody come and explain a few things to me? Long before Athens, long before Rome, long before Ulysses ever left home, long before Abel, long before Cain, long before Noah and the endless rain, long before Adam, long before Eve, long before the people knew what to believe, long before Jesus, long before Job, long before the Buddha and the Sephiroth. Someone
once stood in front of a cave Said there's something going on I can't see Won't somebody come and explain a few things to me And the thunder rolled across the sky And a rainbow appeared as if in reply And he was standing on the threshold of a new frontier And a sense of wonder rolled across his mind And his footsteps like a drum were beating time As he moved forward down that ribbon of a road to draw Before scribes, long before the Hebrews lost their tribes, long before Isis, Osiris, and Ra, long before Shiva, Vishnu, and Brahma, long before Athena, long before Zeus, long before Hermes and his winged shoes, long before Neptune, long before Pan, long before the beast through the labyrinth ran. Someone stood in front of a cave, said there's something going on, I can't see. Won't somebody come and explain a few things to me? And we've been knocking since the time of long before. We've been knocking on that ever wide and open door. And now we're standing on the threshold of a new frontier. And a sense of wonder rolls across our minds like a rainbow. Arcing back through time And we are calling Out a blessing On the ones that brought us here From long before From long before Long before Jesus, long before Job, long before the Buddha in the saffron road. And so I know that these gifts are given of source through your hands and hearts. And they flow like grace lifting this community and so we pledge to be to make responsible use with with your gifts and to grow them and extend them back out into the world thank you so it is right so just as we complete this part of our morning uh, with our soul's blessing I want to um, remind you, if you haven't taken a bulletin with you, there's a lot happening in August and September here, and all the details are in there. You can now go to the website and find a button on the front page to link it to the bulletin, oh, yeah. like in yeah. this form it's, it's not also. A it's, it's a link at the very a link at, Okay, so you can pull up this thing on the website too. Um, oh. Abundance, please. There are bags. Take yeah. what you'd like. Um, organic produce abounds. So I think that's all I need to say here. Other than you're welcome to stay, grab some coffee if you want. We come back at 1030 for a conscious conversation where I take this theme and springboard out with some questions, and then we all get to share our wisdom. Hope to see you back.
May your soul always find what it's looking for. May your heart always lead the way. May you live in peace and harmony. And may love always fill your day. May your path be strewn with happiness. May success find you everywhere. May you always embrace compassion and grace. And may God always answer your prayer. May you always embrace compassion and grace. And may God always answer your prayer. Thank you for being here. Have a blessed morning. Um, to all, all of you out there in cyberspace, the energy in here is phenomenal. Everybody was dancing and laughing and going for it. It's a wonderful place to be, and it's a safe place to be, to express who you really are. And I give thanks for this sacred space. I give thanks to Reverend Diana, and I give thanks to all of you who are in this room and outside this room. We're here to share. We're here to share our love, our wisdom, our compassion. We're here to learn about how we can claim and accept our spiritual authority and make new stories and thrive. I give thanks for this opportunity to share with you as your practitioner, prayer practitioner in training. And I give thanks for the love that exists in the room and the peace we bring to this room as we open our hearts and minds and listen and discuss. Let's go for it. Amen. Amen. So be that. So be that. Well, if you have joined us anew since our Tese this morning, good morning. Um, my name is Diana Johnson, pastor and spiritual director of Mystic Heart Spiritual Center. And we are an independent interfaith community that teaches universal principles and practical spirituality. And we welcome you home to this joyful and energetic com community this morning. So let's jump in with some upbeat music. Don't ever hesitate to get up, dance, move around, hug, say good morning, whatever, whatever the spirit calls you to do. Welcome to the Mystic Heart, join the celebration. Spirit the voice and sing your part, make this affirmation. Spirit made us family with loving hearts to share. Together we are joyfully practicing the possible through prayer. What is it? And everything possible. So welcome to your mystic heart. Right. Let's see if you can stay seated now. Everybody get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Everybody get up on your feet. to be. We are love. We are one. One big family. Hey. Woke up this 
morning with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Walking and dropping with my mind. If you want to stay standing, sitting, whatever helps you to feel the presence of the divine in your body, to get a felt sense of spirit moving through. And join me in the embodiment of living a love-soaked world, where all humans embody and live from kindness and compassion, peace, joy, abundance, and generosity, where all beings live from freedom and justice as principles, living principles. They guide our every thought, our every word, our every action. Where all humans honor and care for one another, for the earth that sustains us, and for every life form that shares this beautiful planet with us. We are creating a world where all needs are met where all beings are well-fed and have the safety and comfort of home, where mental and physical health and education and healthy relationships are ensured by social systems that are grounded in wholeness and in wellness, where all beings serve the greater community doing whatever feeds their souls and are well-supported for their time and their talent. And by that service, each one finds a sense of belonging, a sense of meaning. A world in which all beings are valued and respected for their uniqueness, where authenticity and integrity are the norm, where the peace and kindness we cultivate within us shows up as a world free of hatred and violence. With our growing awareness and by the power of our collective intention, we are writing a new story. A story in which greed is a thing of the past and there is absolute abundance in having enough. We do not lower our vision no matter the appearances that show up in the world, knowing with our whole hearts that such a world is not only possible but inevitable. We align our actions to support our vision, and a new world is being born right now. We open our hearts and our minds, our doors and our arms in radical welcome, erasing all lines of apparent separation. 
In keeping with our vision, we create an open and loving community to which all are invited and in which all have an equal voice. With deep faith in the great mystery that acts upon this prayer, we accept its graceful unfolding into form and experience. And in sweet gratitude, we release it now to the living and loving and lawful presence. And so it is. So it is. Amen. Amen. Satu. Satu. Ashe. Ashe. Aho. Aho. Mm. Whew. Okay. Now we're ready to go. Now we're ready to go. So, if you were with us, well, let's take a look around first. We've had some, you know, go on to their day and some come in. Say good morning. To your, to your family and friends. If you were with us at Taze this morning, you know that our topic this month is um, once upon a, no, the, this week. That's, this week is once upon a time, not this month. I read week and I said month. <laughs> Who knew? We took a meditative journey through, um, through time, recognizing ourselves as one of the eternal spirit, one of eternal spirit. So looking at this idea that at the beginning, Big Bang, and all that we walked through, the spiritual part of us, that divine spark, was already in existence. That's the eternal part of us. So recognizing ourselves as one with the life impulse that sparked the Big Bang. You could say, I'm one with spirit. And it is, we talked about how that life impulse is, that spiritual impulse is what continues to drive us forward, move us forward. We reflected on the human tendency to tell stories as our primary way of communicating. And then finally we considered how much more powerful those stories are when they come forth consciously. So many of our stories are unconscious. And that they're more powerful when they come from who we are being in the world rather than what we are saying about things, ourselves and others and situations. So when we allow our conscious stories to come from who we're being and all of that is in alignment, that's when our stories point to truth. That's when our lives become a living work of art. That's when our light shines brightest in the world. So we briefly mentioned Jesus and Buddha and Chief Joseph and Mahatma Gandhi and Mother Teresa and some of the just millions of notable examples of people who let their lives be their message. And I think it's valuable to have stories of people as examples. But there's also a flip side to having these stories. And that's where we're going to go, going to go in this conversation today. As human beings, one of the ways, one of the primary ways we learn is by imitating. From the time we are exited from the womb and we come into contact with other humans, we begin the process of imitation, maybe before listening and hearing from the womb. So we learn to imitate our caregivers. And later on, we might imitate our friends or the popular kids at school. We grow into adulthood, and our church might tell us that we should try to live as Jesus lived, or our temple might tell us we should try to live as Buddha lived. The media encourages us to imitate those beautiful people on the cover of Name Your Favorite magazine. And our school system pushes us toward academic and financial success according to its own standards. Society is pushing us from every direction to be something other than who we are. So what is the problem with this situation? 
Okay, we forget who we truly are. We're punished for being authentic. It makes it harder for you to find who you are. It makes it harder for you to find who you are. Yes. We're distracted by our senses. Mm -hmm. Distracted by our senses. Without putting any limits on them. So it's, everything is a distraction. Okay, so everything that's coming at us is a distraction. Without putting a ceiling on those mm -hmm. desires. Without putting a ceiling on those mm -hmm. desires. In some cases, we learn to be ashamed of who we are. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we learn to be ashamed of who we are. Um, what happens when nothing fits? What happens when nothing fits? Mm -hmm. who, so, who, how do we find out who we are if nothing it's, we were taught mm -hmm. by all these external things. Right. So then, where do we go from there? That's, hopefully we'll work our way that way today. <laughs> <laughs> Connection is hard to find. Connection becomes really hard to find. Yeah. Along path. I think it's a lack of religion. There's nothing that they really believe in anymore. Mm -hmm. Our children are not taught, it's kind of a carefree everything, and it's, it's mixing up people that they just do their own thing, and, and, and nothing is here in their hearts. So you're using the word religion in its true sense. Religion, L-I-G, lig, that which binds us and connects us to the truth of who we are. That's what religion is. Ideally, supposed to supposed be. Supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the form you're talking about. <laughs> right. So, it's not the other. <laughs> you don't have to squirm out of your seat. <laughs> 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 okay. Pay attention to what triggers you. Those triggers are points of bondage. Okay. Going on. Anyone else? Okay. Oh. I really think that because of all that we've been taught, and, and when we try to figure out who we are, and we just kind of not in the box, and then that's when people get depressed mm -hmm. because they're trying to fill this hole that we all have there with the world and with right. drugs and with TV and with whatever else they mm -hmm. want to decide that they need to fill this with. And the only thing this needs to be filled with is self-love. There you go. And which is God. That's it. Self-love, and we're taught that if you love yourself, then you're selfish. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think whew. that also more so than maybe maybe more so than uh, it, it affecting us, it affects our view of God. Yes. So we, we basically, by whatever paradigm we want is being presented to us, we're mm -hmm. saying God is in this box. Right. Yeah. That's not who that is. Right. So if we know spirit, God, the universe, infinite intelligence, whatever name you want to call it, if we know that as infinite and ever expansive and ever expanding and endless possibilities and all of these things, and then a, a church, a religion, a way of believing, a spiritual path, spiritualities do this too, they, they define, they limit. It has to look this way. And then, you know, it, it's limited. It becomes limited. So often we're left feeling like less than by all of this coming at us. We feel like we're not good enough. No matter who we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter how much good we might be doing in the world in small or great ways, we're not enough. It's never enough. Am I doing it right? Am I saying it right? Am I feeling it right? Am I understanding it right? Ah. So do you think that we're here to imitate someone else? If we learn by imitation... Well, let it be somebody like Jesus or Buddha <laughs> if you're going to imitate Jesus. somebody. <laughs> Even that... Is limit, limit. Yeah. Are we here to be Mother Teresa? 
No. No, she was here to be Mother Teresa. Right. We're not. No, we are here. Go ahead, and then Michael. Well, I think it's a situation where we start off being the proper teachers for the children that don't limit them, that tell them to explore mm -hmm. their ideas and go with their feelings. And, and that way you get it started on the right foundation right. Yeah. to be creative and be right. um, expressive of your own opinions. And so. so we can be a counterbalance to the next generations by offering that encouragement to be bold and explore and be courageous and, and be themselves. And with teachers that have this insight, right. definitely. Right. As well as get to go. Yeah. Thank you. Michael. Yeah, we are, we are to be our own selves because we are all completely new because evolution is constantly happening mm -hmm. and we are spirit evolving. So there, like you say, there's only one Mother Teresa, there's only right. one Jesus. And we are evolving above and beyond anything that has been in the past. Yes. Right. Every day, Chris was making the point in the meditation in Teze, once upon a time, isn't talking about a, a day long past. Once upon a time is now. This is once upon a time. And so is this. And so we can be new and be ourselves and become more ourselves in every moment. But it takes courage mm -hmm. in this world, it does. It reminds me of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, imitation is suicide. Yeah. And we, we kill our, our real self mm -hmm. when we try to, when we deny it and try to be something else. Right. It also reminds me of there's, a, there's an old Jewish tale where the, the, uh, uh, the guy says, when, when I die, God's not going to ask me, why weren't you more like Moses? Right. He's going to say, why weren't you more like you? Yes. <laughs> right. So we're each created, oh, I'm, go ahead, sorry. It's okay. I was thinking along with the idea of courage, mm -hmm. one needs to be able to give themselves permission. Absolutely. Permission to take God outside of the box and allow yourself to reveal who you are. And that means we need to give each other that space to do that. Yes. Doesn't that leave us feeling a little vulnerable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes? That too yeah. takes courage. Yes, that does take courage. Vulnerability takes a great deal of courage. I think the lack of what's happening in our educational, uh, the kids, it's, it's being taken out of the hands of the families and into a whole different degree of understanding that it, it doesn't make any sense, but I think that that hurts, that hurts us because those kids grow up with, with nothing but what the false stuff they're learning in, in schools. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, our schools could use some revamping as a school teacher, <laughs> as the school teachers. And it's one component. Churches play a part. Families, mm -hmm. unstable families in all sorts of ways play a part. So that's probably a whole nother, <laughs> whole nother topic. Well, yeah. okay. Anybody here Good come morning. from a dysfunctional family? Raise your hand. Yes. 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 <laughs> What's a functional family look like? Nobody knows. Like, it looks like yeah. this thing. That's right. This is it. Right yeah. Right here. <laughs> yeah, right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what it brings to mind to me is the undefended self. The undefended like self. You're in this world, this universe, you have parents, you have friends, you have teachers, you have ministers, you have everybody who wants or believes that you should follow this particular path. And then when you express yourself, mm -hmm. you, there are people who will come at you and say you're wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and it could be the simplest of things, or it could be the biggest. Mm -hmm. And so, to keep in mind that you don't have to defend yourself. Right. Yeah, 
I, I have a phrase that I keep right behind my lips because it's helpful for me to have something I can say when, when I could be triggered, but I'm not going to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your heart. Mm -hmm. Diana's version of, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing your heart. And then I do actually attempt to, to feel the gratitude mm -hmm. that I have the opportunity to grow to be aware, to be conscious. So it, it, We're all mirrors. We are all mirrors, yes, for one another. Brenda, <laughs> it's brewing, it's a brewing in Brenda. No? I don't want to share at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Thought you did. Um, getting back to the idea of courage, uh -huh. I think a lot of that is um, kind of, again, getting back to that to our, to our concept of God. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times we we are afraid to uh, somehow offend God, if that's if that's a word. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the best way I can express it. And, okay. Um, <clears throat> instead of realizing that uh, God has had pretty much everything said about him. <laughs> and, he, and he still continues to love those people. And so, right. and so the fact that we're like maybe thinking we're going down a path that is going to uh, pull us away from God is, yeah. is, is a fallacy. Yeah, it's a fallacy. Yeah, we, we do tend, instead of seeing ourselves as made in the image of God, of spirit, we tend to make God in our own image. Oh, which yeah. Is what it takes to say, I might offend God. And, you know, it, it can't be done. So if we can just toss that one right out there. I think one of the challenges in being handed a version of God mm -hmm. and being told not to question in all things as you're growing up, if you grew up with God, it, it kind of makes you feel disconnected in a, in a deep, deep way as far as if this is what it is, mm -hmm. and I don't resonate or connect oh. with this, yeah. then maybe it's not for me. Right. And there was a big time in my life that I was 100% sure that God created me to hate me. Mm -hmm. To hate me. For the purpose of creating something to hate. Wow. Because of the way that, and if I don't align with that, right. it must not be me. And that takes, that's, that's a whole other onion, but that takes yeah. the courage to let go of those things that were yes. laid on you like a jacket that doesn't fit. It right. takes permission to figure out who you are, to yes. let go of any of those things. I was reading this, uh, a shamanic teacher that I really like, and she said, we come here like a beautiful statue, a beautiful statue, and everyone who walks by takes some clay and slings it on it. <laughs> Here's my opinion. Here's who I think you are. Here's what I believe. And pretty soon you cannot recognize that statue. Yes. You don't see its original form, and it takes time and effort to chisel that stuff away. And, yeah. it, and it, it's a long process because we didn't gain that overnight. So right. we have to right. be able to take the time. But I think that that idea of being told what it should look like and what it is is, is one of the biggest challenges to overcome. Yeah. That's true. I love that metaphor. I was going to say, I like, I like that metaphor yeah. too. It's nice. That reminds me of the story true. of the Golden Buddha. Right, yeah. I was just thinking <laughs> of that similarity. Yeah. So, did you say your 100 Hail Marys? <laughs> no. You should have okay. been that, done that <laughs> on the t shirt. <laughs> All right. So we know that we're absolute, uh, absolutely unique. We just have trouble standing in that because of what we've had thrown at us over time. But when you're being truly who you are, that's when you find a sense of home in yourself and home in God. It's, it's only when you're being your true, authentic self that you find that sense of home. So what are the qualities of home? When you think of home, what are some of the qualities of home? A place you feel comfortable. A place you feel comfortable. You be able to be yourself. And you can just be yourself. So rest. You can rest. 
Safety. Support. You're supported. Safety. You're safe. And peaceful. And peaceful. You belong. A place that reflects your own style and likes and dislikes. Yeah, a place that reflects your own style and your own likes and your own dislikes. Home is where your heart is. Home is where your heart is. <laughs> yeah, so these are the things you think about. I mean, home is somewhere you can run around naked, right? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> it's true. You don't have to put on the coverings. You don't have to wear the masks. No masks. No covering, no masks. Not needed. I think it goes back to belonging, too. I mentioned that home is where you know you belong. Where you know you belong. And yeah. And when, when you don't know who you are, or you're afraid to be who you are, right. you don't feel like you belong in society or mm -hmm. sometimes in your own family. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Oh, I just had this funny thought. I, I actually remember the time when I realized I was an adult and it was my house and I could do anything uh -huh. I wanted. And nobody except maybe her in the other room has any say so what I do in there. And we might be shooting arrows and I can jump on my couch and I was free. Right. And it was mine. Yeah. And I remember like that being a very important realization. Yeah. I, I am now free in this space. Yeah, that's the end. Yeah, when you were saying that, the word that was coming to me just balance. Yeah, you just know, balance. It's to find that, right. that balance and like checking in with yourself and like understanding if you have like the energy to might need more of your energy to explain like your concepts or like even just, you know, you're saying like, um, do we exclude those that maybe aren't um, as conscious as we are? Right. And of course we do, because we want we're teachers and we want to be able to like offer them love and make them see the light inside of them as well. But that could be draining for us too. So then it's like, when do you protect yourself and right. like recharge to come back and shine your light again? You know, so yeah. Yeah, I think that was a really good one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I virtually the same thing, just say no, non judgment is mm -hmm. the only thing I can do. I don't have to follow your path. Hopefully, by my um, by my actions, you see what works or what you're trying to get to. But it's not for me to tell you right. how mm -hmm. how you're going to do that or what yeah. it's right. So that way I don't create this energy. Between right. us, that uh, you know, I'm right and you're wrong. So yeah, right. yeah. Having good conversations lately. <laughs> we always have, but they're getting. Well, thanks for bringing it up. I'm no, you're to... welcome. I wish I could delve into it deeper. I'm not trying to sidestep it, but it is a big conversation. Well, so it's yeah for families. For families, for families. And families. Yes, it's it a big. Some will accept it. Yeah, some will not accept it. And right, it makes turmoil over something that's brand new. Yeah, like for my age or whatever, yeah. some of the ladies here maybe haven't experienced, but in my age, it's like, oh my god, yeah, how did this happen? <laughs> so but you do have to accept it, you know. So. You do, and do you have an answer to another question? Are you addressing that? Good, thank you, Angela, because I was going to point sorry, that out. What's your name again? Pat. Pat, come see me after. Um, I actually lead a group that talks about all of that, and we have a whole bunch of people who have the same questions, and we can all get together like, and talk it's about it. It's gotta be. I mean, I don't see right, a yeah. lower range for no, no, uh -uh. Yeah. other people. In no, the there, there are. are. And, and I, I lead a group twice a month. Yeah. And I would love to talk to you more about that if you if you might want to come and visit and see if that might be something. It might not be today because I'm going to the hospital to see my yeah. son. <laughs> it sounds good. <laughs> but I but I love that and I would like to do that. All right. Maybe a car or Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. Absolutely. I have to say that I, I'm very um impressed and proud by I don't know your name. Pat. Angela. Pat. Oh, Pat. 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 Yeah. Because it takes a lot of courage. It does. To say that you don't understand. Right. I yes. really think so. I think it takes it a does. lot of courage. And people will judge you for that and 
They can, yeah. When you have and to exclude you. Exclude you. <laughs> Make them wrong for saying, I right. don't understand this. Right. Where did this yeah. come from? You know, and I think that you have a lot of courage to bring that up because, yeah. you know, that's a hard topic for people to, yeah. you know, there's a lot of right. people who don't understand a lot of things. Right. And it, when they there have courage to life. say that and <laughs> the love, if you give the people who don't understand love, then yeah. they will be, oh, I get it. Right. Yeah. It's all love. Yeah. It's all non-judgment, like David said. Right. And this, we it's, create this as a safe space yeah. for people to be able to come and bring whatever they want to bring. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it I does. knew I wasn't the one raising. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So I'm going to jump a couple of things because the conversation's been so good, but I'd like to wrap up with a uh, reading, I think. Um, so just to make the blanket statement that really as human beings, we would really prefer that everything that bothers us be excluded. Yeah, really. Right? That, that's our preference. Everything that bothers us, we wish it wasn't here. But guess what? It's here for a reason. Best teacher. Best teacher. So if, what about this idea, just briefly consider, that exclusions might only be steps along the way to welcoming everything and everyone. Mm -hmm. Exclusions might be steps along the way to initially including and welcoming. How are those related? Could you say that again? Yes. I said exclusion may serve as a stepping stones each time you exclude something, stepping stones toward eventually learning to include and welcome everything as one. Um, the only thing that I can think of is like in my own spiritual journey, mm -hmm. there was a point in my life where I did have to exclude distractions or right. um, family judgment or family opinions mm -hmm. so I can grow and I can nurture the, the light inside myself and it at, like at first like I held like a lot of guilt because that's what we do you know like oh I sh I don't know and but at the same time like it was really necessary mm -hmm. so I could get to the point I am where I am today right and now I come with a new mindset I mean like those kinds of judgments I come with like a different kind of mindset yeah where it's more open and like I can process it better, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so the exclusions can help us stay focused on that journey that's before us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not not only that, but I I also think that it grants you space mm -hmm. for your own healing and expansion. Right. And sometimes you cannot have that healing if you are continually being injured. Yeah. So right. you have to come in word push outward and focus on you and your heart and your healing. And then, and then once you become a, a, a slightly different version of yourself, mm -hmm. you can look at those things and see them differently. Right. Then you can deal with them in a different fashion. Right. Thank you. Who said that? Well, you asked earlier, where's your home? And for me, more and more, my home is that place within myself where God lives. And the journey to get there has been all about change. So, yeah, I think that I did do some exclusions. And I did do, I did a lot of things. I even hunkered down and, and refused to change. I'm glad you're the only one in this room. That's <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I not talk to it. <laughs> but as I started accepting change and I started moving into that space, I start finding that the old triggers are gone and mm -hmm. I don't have to feel like I can't deal with that. Right. Mm -hmm. That that point in myself that was judgment, mm -hmm. that point in myself that was uncomfortable and not wanting to look at what that's doing me. Right. The more I continue on my journey, the more I can let go of that. Mm -hmm. And they can be this person that can be whoever they want to be. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, I am who I am, and right. I demand that right. Why would I not extend that to someone else? Right, exactly. Like that. exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. So at the risk of taking us through lunch and on to dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> so just tying back to the topic once upon a, a time, you know, this is all about our, our life, our story. It's our stories. These are our stories. Our exclusions <laughs> are part of our stories. Our inclusions are part of our stories. The idea that we are separate as part of a story. The idea that we're all one is part of us. All of it is part of an ongoing story. Yes, David. So would that be part of the problem? That it's our story and we're sticking to it? <laughs> so that could I, give I, us room to transcend it? I don't see it as a problem unless we get stuck. I mean, it's just what is. We, That's we're, what I mean, sticking to it. Yeah, that the stuck places are problems, I would say, probably. We would agree that when that happens, yeah. So I'm going to close with a, a short reading from Gangaji's Hidden Treasures to kind of bring us all to a, a close. <laughs> we recognize the location of the story in our flesh and emotions. From this recognition, choice is born. When we know we're in the middle of a story, suddenly we can know we have choice about how that story goes. We have most often either chosen to continue the given story or to rebel against that story. Naturally, we've been thrilled to realize that we can choose to live a different story, one we feel more in alignment with. There is yet another choice. We have the capacity to take a moment and release all stories. Mm -hmm. We can experience what it means to be nobody, uncovered even by our primary identity. Underneath all the stories, we can experience that deep core of ourselves that is historyless, genderless, and parentless, naked. That presence is unencumbered by relationships and has no past and no future. In the core of our beingness, we are free of definitions. Unencumbered by our definitions, we experience ourselves as conscious intelligence, aware of itself as open, endless space. This instant of being storyless is an instant of freedom. For even if our story is filled with light and beauty, to the degree that we define ourselves through that story, we are less free. After such a moment, stories are never the same. <laughs> they can be present, as they most likely will be, but they no longer have the inherent power to define our reality. The inner wealth that is available to us is no longer limited or augmented by particular inner or outer events. While the personality or the creatureness of each individual continues, just as stories continue, the underlying awareness, the true I, has come home to itself. After such a moment, choice is present, where we were blindly choiceless before. When we are not blinded by the stories that have been created for us or the stories we create, we can appreciate the mysterious vastness that is holographically present in each moment of any story. We can discover what is and has always been here throughout whatever rendition of story was being lived or believed. Each of us can take any story from our past and we can discover the treasure that was hidden only through unquestioning belief in narrowly focused assumptions of the time. Story can then be profoundly appreciated as displays of multidimensional life expressing itself in all forms. So leave you with some of those thoughts. If you're interested in delving into her work, Hidden Treasures, Uncovering the Truth in Your Life Story by Gangaji. Excellent book. So in this perfect and holy moment, we close together in prayer. 
and bring and sit. We become silent together in the presence of the great mystery. The one life, the one source of all that is. Feeling presence coursing through our bodies, our minds and spirits. We can relax. We are safe. We let go of all stories about anything. And we can simply be here now. Grateful for this reminder that in any moment we choose, we can let go of whatever story is not serving us. We move into the week ahead refreshed and renewed. By this time in friendship and community, this time of listening, reflecting, sharing, and learning from the experiences and the insights and the wisdom of others. I give thanks for my growing awareness and for the awakening of the human family. We are reminded of how blessed we all are. We move into this week committed to the practice of compassion and loving kindness to ourselves and all those around us. In the spirit of the Buddhist tradition, may we all be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to us. May we all have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome the inevitable challenges in life. May our parents, our teachers and mentors, our friends, and all living beings across the world be happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May they also have patience, courage, understanding, and determination to meet and overcome challenges. Feeling the power and impact of this prayer. I gratefully release it now to do its good work. It is done. And so it is. Amen. Satu. In the Buddhist tradition. Thank you for such a great conversation. And thank you for being so open as to allow these things to flow time-wise. This is a little later than we typically go, but you know, lunch is just next door, so we don't have far to go. <laughs> so each Sunday, we invite you to join in the celebration of the work that we're doing here by sharing of your financial good, should you choose to. And if you're joining us online today, you can go to mysticheart.org. And you'll find a donate button and you'll find our mailing address. We also have a gracious giving program for those who might want to commit a regular uh, pledged amount to help us in the guiding of our finances. You can get more information online if you're interested in that. So I invite you to join me in affirmation and blessing of this offering by saying with me, as I awaken to the God within me and all around me, I see abundance everywhere I look. I consciously step into that flow of abundance by this act of giving. I offer this gift freely in the spirit of love 
blessing and sending it forth to heal and prosper. It is evidence of my deep faith. It does good work in the world and blesses all of creation. I give from a consciousness of abundance. And so enjoy, get up and dance if you wish. Be yourself by Narayana Janet. financial good, your time and talent, knowing it comes from the source and through you for this community. So I give thanks to each and every one of you for your active participation and your love and trust it will be put to good use. Thank you. So yes. Ready? All right, here we go. All together, hand in hand, we see the light, we take a stand, and we are changing. A whole new life for you and me, take a path.
guys thank you for being here please feel free to join us for lunch next door if you want to stay cool stay hydrated